And today joining with me is Lindsay Finch. She is an English teacher for Virtual Arkansas. And we are so excited to have her here today as we talk about the test standard and indicator 3C, engaging students in learning. So we're gonna start off with some questions and, and Lindsay's gonna share with us her approach in regards to how she engages her students in learning and some of the practices she does as an online teacher. Welcome, Lindsay, we're so glad you're here. Um, when I'm planning activities and assignments, I want to present the content in a way in which all students feel they can succeed. And in all the material that I present, whether that's through flip learning, in the announcements, in live Zoom, I share that they can succeed and to please reach out. Especially being online, you don't want students to feel alone or isolated. So having that presence and letting them know that you are there and they can reach out to you anytime, I think is a huge help in helping students succeed. create student groups where they can learn from one another and help one another. I have a student forum called Clear as Mud that I link in my announcements as I drive students to that every Monday. Please check the announcements and then there is a video lesson waiting for them to watch and underneath that would be the due dates, what's due for that week and then the Clear as Mud forum that's a group for students where they can post questions about assignments or really anything as long as it's appropriate and help one another. I also do study groups of about six students and they really like that. And then of course throughout the semester or the year, depending on your course, you have groups needed for intervention. So now we are in week six of school and I'm starting to group students based on their need and review, review different standards. And in live Zoom, I like to use polling to ask questions because it's real time feed that you can share with them. Breakout rooms are really nice. You just jump from room to room and see how your students are doing and help them. Um, I like doing the answer in chat and just traditional raise your hand. That's a very quick formative assessment or your fist of five, depending on your understanding. So what I'm hearing from what you're saying is that with these strategies and tools, use a lot of variety. Um, to engage your students so it gives them opportunities to respond in um, multiple ways. Is that correct? Absolutely. You, you want to communicate through different modalities. So that might be through your announcements or your learning management system, through reflecting, asking students to respond and just how are you doing message. So you definitely want to reach out through different avenues to get them engaged. That's really good. Um, and one of the things I think that we've talked about too is that um, sometimes students won't read the announcements that you put at the top of the course, but if you put that same announcement in the email, they'll actually read it there. So um, in that positive um, approach that you have that you want all students to learn, you anticipate that students are going to retrieve their information and their learning in different ways and in different places. Is that right? Absolutely, yes. I think that if you focus on the expectations for the course, Keep that list small. Like I said, I drive them to the announcements. And even though I force that, some students just, they're not connected to the announcements, but they like receiving them via email or they like to um, get those through the learning management system. So just try different avenues, as many ways as you can to reach. I don't believe that you can over communicate in online learning. So that's what I do. very important that you work the course out ahead of your students. You want to make sure that all the content is showing up accurately, that your links are working. And so you have to take that technical part when you are teaching online. So you have to check that first. And then you just want to make sure that your content is worthy of your students that you currently have. If they need something different, you'll adjust with resources. Um, and those change year to year, just like they would for any teacher. You want to focus on mastery and a part of that is scaffolding. 
You want to let them know that the lesson they're currently working on serves a purpose and that it will be used in the next lesson and the next lesson and that you're building. And keep the mastery small as well. What are the main topics that you want them to learn and accomplish before they can move forward? And I find that students greatly appreciate that. Sometimes there can be a lot of extra, extra videos that don't need to be there, extra assignments or too many help documents and kids just start drowning in, in that information. So keep your mastery focus small, but communicate it and let them know where they're headed. I always like to start with the end in mind so I know where we're going and I keep reassuring them that we're getting there. Each assignment that they're bringing bits with them to reach mastery. Through um, supports, I use, like I've said many times, the flipped learning through videos articles I may have them read, Padlets. It's really fun. <laughs> and you can also do micro topic videos. I like to do that. That's kind of for the extra, extra support throughout the week. If you notice with your particular group that they are struggling on a standard, you can do some work, record that, send it out and say, here, watch this video for extra support. And usually you'll hear back from quite a bit of students on those. Uh, I would agree. I know that um, in some of the things that I've done, some of the online learning that I've done, I really like having multiple types of resources available just for the way that I learn. And being the, the just the recording itself is so beneficial because I know sometimes if there's a concept that someone is struggling with, they can go back and watch that video over and over again, where sometimes if you're in um, a live classroom, once that, that information is taught, there's no way to go back and retrieve that. So I know that that is something that students in an online environment highly value. And so um, teachers that are working towards that beneficial part of an online classroom will have those microtopic videos in there to support that. before starting with the end in mind so you always want to start with your pacing guide complete and then your content is dated based on that due date and it's broken down even more than announcements are made for each week based on your dated content and students use that pacing guide as well to guide themselves throughout the assignments for each week so we provide the due date for the week what needs to get done and then they have the flexibility to navigate through the lessons and the assignments when they see fit based on their extracurricular activities. Many high school students have a job or just right now with being at home, it's really important that they have the flexibility to just get it done by a due date. And of course, we still provide the microtopic videos, a live Zoom session. So they do have support from us, but the due date and how they navigate through it, that really is up to them, which I think helps them feel like they are a part of the process and they get to kind of determine their pace as life happens for them throughout that week and they just plan accordingly. So in many ways that empowers them and when, when a person feels empowered they're more likely to be engaged in what they're doing and take more ownership is what I'm hearing you say. Exactly, yes. Well, thank you. I think these are some really good and important points that you brought to light of how an online educator um, engages students in learning and really hits home the standard test, um, standard and indicator 3C and test. So I really appreciate, appreciate Ms. Lynch, you joining us today and sharing with us some of the, the practices um, and procedures that you do to ensure your student success. So thank you so much. What we saw with Ms. Finch, with engaging students in learning with the uh, standard and indicator 3C, is that she was working with students to cognitively engage them with the content. It wasn't just about are they attentive, but are they cognitively engaged? She also worked to focus on groups in different ways um, from the forum that she posted where students can post questions within the course to creating study groups that are in groups of six so that students can work with each other um, and study with each other, which is something that sometimes um, in an online environment, students may um, miss that opportunity um, that they would have in a face-to-face. -face. So creating that kind of environment in an online environment is really thinking beyond um, beyond the situation and also considering what student need there may be um, that helps them to further engage in the content. 
In addition to that, it was really evident that Ms. Finch considers all of the resources that are available and is purposeful and, intent and uses intention with what she provides the students in order to focus on what's essential and not overwhelm with unnecessary information, yet make it relevant and important to the student. And that's just being cognizant of student time, not over um, assigning things just to uh, fill up space, but be purposeful and intentional, and then also be mindful of the fact that students have different schedules and that a pacing guide to help guide them is very important so that they can track along, but also providing options for the students so that they can access the information they need in the time that they need it with the time that they're working within their own schedule. The other point that's really um, made here is that she is constantly thinking ahead, that backwards design. And with a course that's already created, she is able to look ahead and look at how the course is designed and then modify and adjust according to her current learners using already a vetted curriculum so that she can modify and adjust to those specific learners that she has in that moment, which is really critical that teachers have that access so that they are able to work and focus on what the students need rather than having to create content out in front of the teacher. And so that's essential as well, is that it's provided for them in such a way that they can focus on the delivery of instruction and providing engaged learning for the students where they can focus on designing opportunities for cognitive engagement. <music>